you, Terry, for being here. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, the first question that we want to ask you is how long have you been living in Naples and what business or businesses do you own? Yeah, so I have been a visitor to Naples for about 20 years. Um, but I, and, and over the course of those 20 years, you know, I kind of came as a vacation. I was like one week and then it turned into two, <laughs> then it turned into four. And here we are 20 years later and I live here. But I would say about a year and a half ago is when I kind of made the, made the transition to residency from, from Minneapolis. Was, Minneapolis. Yes. The, the bold north. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what, 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 what initially brought you, why Naples, to visit? Was it family? Um, yeah, family. family. My, my parents had a place down here and um, I just, you know, loved it. The mm -hmm. minute they got a place down here and I started coming, I'm like, okay, I get it. This place is pretty amazing. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. every year you, you visited, was it different? Like, did you see the, cha the, the growth? Um, you know what? In the early years, not so much. In the, I would say in the last five years, mm -hmm. you know, I really started to notice it pre-pandemic. Um, and then, of course, pandemic. Right. Um, but I, you know, I really started to notice the growth and the change in terms of what I could see and feel mm -hmm. as a visitor about five years ago. Okay. Um, and it's definitely very different. Now. Right, right. And, but exciting, different, and I think, in, you know, growth always has its pros and its cons, but, you know, for the most, most part, I I believe growth is good, and right. um, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, and what, what business do you own in? Yes, yeah, so um, I launched Face Foundry Naples. Um, we've been in business just uh, about seven months. We opened in April mm -hmm. of this year, and... Um, uh, Face Foundry is a new franchise concept. It started in the Twin Cities, where I'm originally from. <clears throat> and um, I know the founder really, really well. She's a friend of mine. We met in a women um, CEO roundtable group up in the Twin Cities, and she's an amazing entrepreneur. And um, my background is actually not in the skincare business. I, my, my background is um, in education technology. I spent about 20 to 25 years in that space. I had two startup companies um, and sold my last company in 2019. And while I was going through that process, she was going the pro through the process of concepting face foundry i was one of the first converts and customers <laughs> <laughs> and um it was something like immediately i just was super drawn to the concept because it's really different um in the skincare space and so as yeah. i was thinking about like my my next chapter of my life after running a couple of tech companies um what did i want to do did i want to continue in that space did i want to run companies in that in that context um, and then the pandemic happened in the, in the midst of all of that and I think it really you know not to be cliche but I think it really did make me stop and pause and think about um, business leadership and what I wanted to do um, as a CEO and as a as a woman business leader um, in a completely different business context right. and, and you know for me I just I missed people and um, I believe really very much in in having your business be something that you're passionate about. Um, and for me, my I think my success, part of my special sauce as a business leader um, and an owner is uh, is the connections with people. Yeah. And I really started thinking about like, could I, could I do that? Would I find the joy in that leading a company from behind a computer screen? Um, which was largely the context in, in 2020 as I was, you know, making that transition um, after my right. last tech company. And, and I and I just knew that no, I didn't wanna didn't want to run another tech company from behind a computer screen. I wanted to do something where I can really be with people mm -hmm. um, and and lead in that perspective and so it just was sort of like the perfect storm of, right. of opportunities something that really I care very deeply about um, and a, in a business context and in a location that I love right. um, and so that that's right. sort of how I ended up bringing how many, how many employees do you have we have eight employees now uh, with the tech company Oh, the tech company, before I sold, we had about 60 employees. 60 wow. employees. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have so many questions now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I definitely want to say, my mom loves 
Face Foundry. Oh, thank yes. you. <laughs> That's I good. Love hey. Hey. I love Face Foundry. Yay. Yes, well, Face Foundry is for everyone who has skin. The, the, so. I was scheduled to do... Um, I can't remember You're, what I was, was originally like a more scheduled. like a natural type of facial. Yeah, it was more... But then I ended up getting the cryo queen. Oh, yeah. Or king, <laughs> and, or, as the case may yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was cool. It was so many different things. Yeah, the, cry, the cryogenic yeah. therapy yeah. is amazing for your skin. Yeah. yeah. And, um, okay, so the tech company, mm-hmm. how did you... What is what is educational tech mean exactly yeah so ed ed tech education tech is a is a a particular technology vertical where you're developing solutions um could be hardware could be software but solutions specifically for the pre-k to 12 or Mm -hmm. in some cases all the way through post-secondary how did you get started did you go to school for that um no so my my kind of my discipline you know coming out of college was marketing and um public relations and and I started um, my career in more of a traditional tech Mm -hmm. um, space pre, I'm going to date myself, you know, like pre Y2K. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I, I, when I moved to the Twin Cities, so I I went to college not in the Twin Cities, um, spent first few years of my career um, outside of, of, you know, on the East Coast actually, um, and a variety of, Places that's another part of my history, but we'll say that for another <laughs> podcast. Um, but I ended up back in the Twin Cities in, a, in around 2002, um, and um, landed my first position in a education company, and I just fell in love with it. Um, okay. For me, it was you know kind of take for for me as a marketer and somebody who loves PR, like and and it really continues to this day, even with my journey to. Face Foundry of, of wanting to be behind a product or a service that I care very deeply about. What was the edu- uh, What was the company? Um, at that point in time, it was Plato Learning, which is now many years later. It's known as Edmentum. Um, it's a K twelve curriculum. I feel like I've definitely online learned. curriculum program. Um, I've worked in children's publishing. Um, my last company was a K twelve assessment. Um, company, but I, there's something about creating a product or a, you know, like creating a solution that's designed to help teachers and help children. Okay. And um, so it was, so you know, so it's, it's not making online. it widgets for widgets sake. It's really, you know, kind of has a purpose and a mission behind it. And that's super right. important to me. Right. So once I fell into that 20 years ago, like I just never left. Mm-hmm. I, I just, and, and to this day, you know, what I do in my, my quote unquote spare time, haha. Ha. Um, I think that's a question you're going to ask me about. <laughs> is I continue to, I serve on boards and I continue to consult with CEOs of education companies. What was your first role in the, what was your role in the company? Marketing. Marketing? Yep. In the company. Mm-hmm. Yep. So as the years went on, you learned like the ins and outs of that space. Yes. And then you started. Yes. So um, over the course of my career, I said I started in marketing. It's kind of my first love, my first discipline. But, um, you know, had the opportunity to lead inside sales teams, product marketing, um, and just, you know, had the opportunity over the course of my career to kind of get my fingers in a lot of the different disciplines of business. Mm -hmm. Um, I've worked in large publicly traded companies. I've worked for family owned small um, companies and, you know, and companies in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it gave me a lot of exposure to just business in general and sort of the fundamentals of business um, don't really change. Mm -hmm. Um, Kind of those basics, Mm -hmm. basic fundamentals of a healthy, thriving business are are pretty much the same. Um, And then you apply the right context, you know, in terms of the specific market vertical and... What would you um, say are the the basic fundamentals? mm, um, Well, you have to, you know, product and market fit Mm -hmm. are, are super important. Um, having a strong, solid, and focused strategy, mm-hmm. um, 
culture, 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 culture. <laughs> um, that to me, I'm and I'm super passionate about right. that. I mean, I think if you don't have a healthy, productive um, sort of growth mindset culture, mm -hmm. it's it, you're you're tripping over yourself. Right. So that's that to me is almost like the number one fundamental. Yeah. And then having you know a sound strategy. You know, product and market fit timing matters. Would you um, say product and market fit goes to doing your homework? Oh, for sure. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. definitely matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The reason I say that is because I think that the more you can be prepared prior to get into business, I know that once you get into business, you know, there's hurdles that you just can't prepare for unless you go through them. Mm -hmm. But the more prepared you are, I think the more you set yourself up. Yeah, yeah, better. absolutely. Yeah. As opposed to just going for it, which is great also. There's definitely an aspect of just going for it, though. I mean, for right. sure. And that I think, you know, the 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 best business leaders, if they, they go back, they a lot of it is just taking the risks, mm -hmm. um, but doing that in a smart way, which is yeah. we're kind of coming back to those fundamentals. You know, you have to be financially healthy. Cash is king. You know, you got to have cash mm -hmm. um, to invest in the growth of your business, invest in people, invest in your clients. I mean, so those are right. those th those don't change whether you're in a skincare business, an education business, right? You know, so medical technology. I actually it's do the have same. a couple questions <laughs> from what she said. I mean, I was building um, when you saw your company. Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you could retire? Financially, the reason I asked this is because I asked you how many employees you had. Mm -hmm. You said sixty, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, you were in the tech world. Mm -hmm. So, did that? Did you feel like you could retire financially and then just venture into something else, um, or not? Not there yet. You know, probably mm -hmm. that just wasn't on my radar. Wasn't ready. Um, just stop. You, yeah. you have to do something else. And that's partly, that's my personality, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm um, I, I'm in a, a self-described accomplishment junkie, and I love to work. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, at the time that I sold the company, you know, I, I wasn't just kind of in a mindset or a, a frame of mind where I was like ready to quote unquote retire. I was like, okay, what's next? You Let's sold, go. But you sold, it, you sold it, you sold it positively. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. And so, I had two partners. Okay. Um, How did that feel? Oh, my gosh. It felt amazing. It felt amazing. Um, you know, we built something. We built, I mean, we were super proud of what we built. Mm -hmm. um, and that, of course, you know, we didn't build the company. We didn't create the company or build the company. We never sat, you know, from day one, um, my two partners and I are our our conversations were around how do we create something lasting and sustaining for educators mm -hmm. um, to make the lives of teachers better, to help them be more focused and more um, successful in what they're doing with every single student in their classroom. And let's do that and let's have a hell of a good time while we're doing it. That, you know, that was really what we what we started and we didn't, you know, we weren't going like, okay, and when it gets to year five and we get to this amount of revenue, let's make sure we're ready to sell. We were like, as long as we're having fun with this, we're just going to keep, we're just going to keep doing it. And the opportunity just came. The opportunity came. It was right time. Um, we, we had an incredible growth journey. We went from, um, you know, startup in 2015 to about eleven million dollars in revenue and sixty wow. employees in about three and a half years time. Wow! Um, and really, what, what was it? What was the product? Yeah, it was an assessment. It was a K twelve assessment, um, reading math, social, emotional behavior. So a um, test. Um, yeah. Well, yes. Universal screening and progress monitoring. Wow. Um, and um, it was super innovative. There's uh, there was nothing like it in the market. And you know, when I come back to product market fit. Yes, like that super matters, right? Timing matters, the right product at the right time, addressing right. the right needs in the market. That's magic. Would you um, say okay, what about location? Uh, in that particular location? in that particular business location, it, right. it was kind of location agnostic. Right. We served the entire country with right. our with our right. solution. Have you ever started a business with no money? Yeah, I just did. <laughs> or I should say with my own personal money. 
with no money. When you say no money. The, because there are certain businesses that you can start with money. And maybe in the digital world, you can literally start very low. Um, so that's why I wanted to know. Yeah, and I, I would say Fastbridge, uh, Fastbridge Learning was the name of the company um, that that my last company that we sold. And I would say it probably fell more in that category. We, uh, my two partners were part of University of Minnesota. They developed the product and the technology as really is for research purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and the university and many universities around the country sort of have a, a, a pretty robust um, technology commercialization incubation program. Um, so the, the FastBridge technology got recognized by the university. You know, somebody smartly sort of brought the two the two original inventors under their wing and said, you know, we think you might have something here that's viable from a commercial perspective. Um, and over the course of about an 18 month period, they sort of incubated it. They had, you know, a couple of student grad grad student assistants that that came in and helped and, and worked to kind of build it up. Um, and um, the way that we really funded, so we were completely bootstrapped at the time we rolled out of the university in 2015, completely bootstrapped. I, you know, the one of the founders took out a second mortgage on his house and kind of just had that there just in case mm -hmm. um, if we needed it to make payroll or what mm -hmm. have you. And so when we started the business, we literally started with nothing. And what are your thoughts for always pay, pay yourself first? Um, is that is that actually possible? And 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 the reason I ask you this question is, I had a great friend. Um, I have a great friend. He's a developer, right? And he 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 told me because we've been in business many years as well. Mm -hmm. And he always told me, you should always pay yourself first. And and uh, you know, and I asked her, I asked him a question. Well, have you ever started a business with no money? He said no. And I was like, well, that's the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have three apples, do you feed your kids first or do you eat the apples? Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I never, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. You know, that's why I asked you the question, do, do you, have you ever started the business with money or without? And what were the differences? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, it's definitely riskier and scarier mm -hmm. to start with nothing. But you, right? can, you can still do it, right? You can still do it. But, you know, a lot of people, um, you know, they pick up a side hustle, right? Yeah. Like you have, you still have to put food mm -hmm. on the table while yes, you're right. starting yes. your business. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I, you know, I, it's a, it's a tough one. I mean, everybody's financial situations a little different. I tend to not be a pay yourself first you know, in terms of my business philosophy, cash is king. Mm -hmm. You can't grow the business without investing in the business. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking money out of the business, right. you're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Yes, but right, obviously right. Yeah. that has to be balanced with, you got to put food on the table for yourself and your family. Right. So, you know, I, you know, I feel like the least amount you can take out of the business for yourself personally, especially in those earlier days, is going to help accelerate the growth of your business. Mm -hmm. right. um, but that looks a little different for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think about raising money? Um, that also has its, you it's know. Compl everything, it's complex. It, 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 it's complex. That's what's crazy you know? about business because yes. every, almost every answer is very complex. Yeah, right. it's like I hate to fall back on, well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> but it is true. But it's true. It depends. Um, you know, raising money because you need cash, right? That's that's the thing. So if you don't have per your personal cash to draw upon, um, you know, there's a, you know, you have friends and family, right? That's mm -hmm. the first place, especially if you're starting out a new business, um, if you can, if you can get the support of friends or family to help in the early funding of the business. That's and there's different formulas oh, oh, to absolutely. raising because there's the equity, there's almost the loan Absolutely. Way. What, what would you say, what do you prefer? If you were, if someone was to ask, I, I want to raise, I need to raise money for this business because this business is capital in, in, intensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, would, how does that look? How, what formula should I present to people? 
Um, personally, I would always go the loan first, right? Because oh. I mean, otherwise, you you literally are giving away a piece of your business if you're giving away equity. So, mm-hmm. so you go for debt capital before you go for equity. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I I believe so. Again, like it depends, and every you know everybody's situation you know is a little different. <laughs> you know why it's it's something that. I think trends a lot because of the show uh, Shark Tank. Oh, sure, yes. And everybody, <laughs> I love that show, and, by and, the way. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what, what everybody's giving away. I think every good op- entrepreneur loves watching Shark Tank. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but I guess it's yes. not about the money. It's about who you are actually partnering Absolutely. with when it comes to equity. And right. that's that's you know, in terms of doing a capital raise, I think you know the. I'm advising a couple of CEOs on this right now who, you know, when you're in the early days, if you can bootstrap it with your own money or friends and family, um, and, you know, ideally give as, give as little equity, give as little of your business away mm-hmm. as possible, um, unless, you know, you start out with a partnership and that's all agreed upon in advance. And by the way, one of my biggest pieces of advice is have a good lawyer have a good lawyer from day one just make sure that you're right. really thinking through these things and these constructs and these agreements mm-hmm. um because someday it will really matter and if you d- hadn't you know thought about that at the beginning mm-hmm. right. um it can create a lot of consternation you know in the future but um you know try and keep as much of the equity as you can for as long as you can but when the time comes that you you know you've got that foundation built and you feel like you're ready to scale Capital will help with that, and so then the, you know, then that's the time to start thinking about. Well, is it the time to do a capital raise? What does that look like? Um, who do I want to partner with? Because when you bring in money, they want a piece of the pie, and oftentimes they want. Um, not always. Sometimes they'll be a silent partner mm-hmm. and just uh, you know a money partner. Maybe they take a spot on a board mm-hmm. or an advisory board or uh, you know. A, a board of directors, um, but oftentimes, you know, they can they can add value to the business if you pick the right partner. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's the, it. You know, those types of things take so many way, shapes, and forms. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a necessarily a right way or a wrong way to do it, but I do think that when you're growing a business and you do decide to offer equity to somebody, either you know, as a partner or as an investor, you absolutely want to vet. <clears throat> Right. Um, that you have shared, that you're aligned, that you have shared values, that you have a shared vision for the organization. Um, if they're bringing something to the table besides just money, what does that look like? And you know, trying to to fill in those gaps right. um, with you know, what are you <coughs> uniquely um, able to do for your business, mm-hmm. and you know, where where are your weaknesses? Yeah. Um, and we all have that. You know, we're we're not experts in every potential mm-hmm. functional area of a business. So, you know, maybe I'm really great at marketing, but I hate accounting. Having an excellent accountant, bookkeeper, right. and mm-hmm. as you grow, a, you know, eventually a CFO, super important, right? right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I don't bring that talent personally, <laughs> like I just, I can get by, but you know, I know enough to be dangerous, but eventually you need that talent, right? Yeah. So trying to bring investors maybe that, you know, in that Shark Tank style mm-hmm. where it's like, yeah. hey, I really need somebody who can help me tap into distribution channels right. or knows how to market in a way that I I don't. I'm a like I'm a product person. I can create and invent product all day long, but I don't know how to get it to market. Right. So that's when you know bringing in a partner and bringing in money also, can help. I think it also comes down to where the business is, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because sometimes people that are not in business think that you're raising money to sustain the business and it's actually Depending on where the business is, it's most of the time is to fund growth. Yes, very mm-hmm. few investors want to put money into a business mm-hmm. just to help you sustain. Right, because when they, they see the growth of the business, plus. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. right, which means they're <clears throat> looking for growth. And what do you think about um, enjoying the process and not so much? Well, always having goals, mm-hmm. but how important it is to enjoy the process like every stage of the business because it's a journey and then eventually you get to where you want to be but you were always so not not yeah you know not everyone but you know almost like a like uh, you have a goal and then you hit the goal and then um you don't enjoy it or you don't uh celebrate 
And yes. then it's like the next school and the, yes. the next school. I believe very much in celebrate the wins. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's when you're in it and you're grinding, it's, it's hard to sometimes do that, to take the time to like really reflect on here's where I started, here's where I am today, and here's what it took. And, and mm-hmm. it's a, it's, it, the journey is difficult. It's long. It's hard. It's a lot of hours. It's sacrifices. But there's, there's rewards in that too. Um, so trying to kind of just have that mindset of like celebrate the wins and, and enjoy the journey as much as you can. Um, cause otherwise like, why are you doing it? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Why are you doing it? Right. You know, if it's, if you're not finding that joy, if you can't see the success and find the joy in that success, whatever that looks like for you or for your business, um, then you're, you're probably not in the right business. Mm-hmm. Do you have, what are some future goals for you, for, for yourself? For myself um, and for Face Foundry, mm-hmm. you know, for me, I I am doing this for kind of a, you know, a variety of reasons. Um, you know, I, I had opportunities and I still do have opportunities to kind of go back into that ed tech space. Um, and with each... Each time I'm asked about it, each time I'm I'm blessed to have an opportunity, I continue to do that reflection and it's for me it's like that's not where I want to be right now. I don't that's I'm not finding that passion, I'm not feeling that fire in the belly to go back to um kind of that corporate um which is which is to be honest pretty surprising cuz I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it and I love the work I do as CEOs and watching watching them grow their businesses but for, for me personally I kind of just kind of keep coming back to like be true to yourself right. and for me being true to myself right now is is wanting to be in a business where I'm I'm truly empowering um, other women um, face foundry is a pretty women centric business concept um, both in terms of the women who are working in the business and our primary customer base the founder um, is, is, a, is yes a woman, mm-hmm. right? yes how, how much would you say someone like for example a higher up in corporate in the corporate world knows about business when they've never had a business before i was about mm. that's a great question that's a great question <laughs> well um Let's see, how would I answer that question? I mean, I, I think it, it, I hate to say it, like, it depends, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know, um, the bigger the business, the more narrowly defined the functional areas. Mm-hmm. Not narrowly defined, but more specific the functional areas are, and the more layers there are to that upper, mm-hmm. upper management, upper leadership, right? And so I think for those reasons, um, if, you've, if you've worked, in a larger corporate context and let's say you are you are in sales or you're in marketing or whatever your functional area you have a lot of exposure in that particular vertical but maybe not necessarily broadly across the business and so um that kind of creates a situation where you know you you just may not have the full context of of what it looks like you know and it's it's tough you know being a business leader is is not easy in any context mm-hmm. um in a large business context you do have investors you have a board of directors you mm-hmm. have sometimes you've got you know so you're not the only one calling the you're shots. not the only one calling the shots and it's it can be very complex and so sort of the pressures and and all of the variables that go into making a business decision um it's, um, it's, it's the only way so you work with a lot of ceos is, mm-hmm. the, is the only way to be a ceo do you have to go up a ladder mm, or do you or, or i think it, sometimes, sometimes it depends on the yeah. size of the business yeah well how do you get to that position as a ceo um i i think it takes a lot of hard work and experience and sometimes it's just being in the right place at the so right it can, time it can be a, it can be an ex-business owner mm-hmm. that falls into that role mm-hmm. with that opportunity to come it absolutely away. could or it can be somebody that kind of comes up the ranks if you will of the hierarchy like you described it um who's you is know, that common or what would you I say think is it's fair common? i think it's fairly common <coughs> um, i think there are certain disciplines um you know, sales and marketing is a pretty typical discipline to get into a CEO 
role. Um, it's more common for a CEO to have come through sales and marketing than say to come through finance, but not always. There's former CFOs um, and, and finance professionals that end up in a CEO role. And again, it kind of depends on the business. It depends on what the goals of that business are. Um, oftentimes, if it's a business that's very growth oriented or is going through a growth phase, they want somebody that has more of that strategic go to market um, experience. Um, sometimes the business is a more mature business and they're they're more focused on the bottom line and EBITDA and EBITDA growth and that tends to maybe be somebody who has more of a finance background okay but for the most part you would say to be in that position you have to be very you have to push sales sales and marketing is that that's that role right well at the end of the day the CEO the CEO is responsible for a healthy you know financial picture and that often mm -hmm. means you have to have healthy revenue and a healthy bottom line but driving growth mm -hmm. is important so yeah. understanding your go-to-market understanding your strategy um, also again depending on the um, context of the business and the strategy having mergers and acquisitions experience being able to look at the landscape of your your particular um, um, you know, market and, and say like, we have a gap here, this is our growth strategy, and there's two little companies over there that would, would help us fill maybe a product market fit that we're missing, mm -hmm. um, and we've got cash, let's go acquire those businesses. And then, you know, so there's other, there's multiple ways to grow a business, right? right? Mm -hmm. So if mergers and acquisitions um, is part of the growth strategy of the business, having a CEO, um, and an executive leadership team that has that experience right. um, is important too. So it really does depend on the context of the business, the maturity of the business and what their strategy is right. and, and what's the right kind of profile of a CEO to lead that company. Yeah, yeah. And um, what ultimately, what drives you? Um, you know what, mission and culture really drive me um, I mentioned that earlier for me I have to I have to feel that or fire in my belly in my belly um, what drives me to succeed is I'm an accomplishment junkie okay. I, I like I thrive on success <laughs> um, and I work really hard to achieve it right is mm -hmm. money a, a, a driving factor for you money is great Right. But it's, you know, like, I'm not going to lie, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. no, money, yeah, is, yeah. money is great. It offers you <clears throat> the ability to, to, to have freedom and make choices. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily like the number one driver for me. Right. Um, for me, it's more around people, connections, uh, a mission that that matters to me. Um, I love coaching and mentoring and, and helping people around me succeed, which is why I love advising other CEOs so much. Um, it, I, it, bring, it truly brings me joy. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think that the ultimate goal for everyone that gets into business at the end is financial freedom? Apart from what they're passionate about and what, they're, what industry they're in? I'm going to say freedom. Freedom. Mm -hmm financial being one aspect of that um, you know part of it too part of being an entrepreneur is being able to be in charge of your own destiny right um, have the right amount of flexibility in terms of how you want to balance your time um, where you want to focus your time and that changes for us over you know whatever phase of life you're in right um, and so I think there's just a general you know statement around freedom mm -hmm. and the freedom of choice and how we spend our time and where we focus our time and energy and what brings us joy that being a business leader being an entrepreneur um, in particular um, affords in a way that being you know a w-2 employee right. doesn't right right mm -hmm. but there's financial risk in that right you right. know and and being able to kind of be comfortable yeah. with that risk yeah um and, and it's not for everybody it's absolutely mm -hmm. not for everybody high risk high reward yeah absolutely or 
low risk, big reward. <laughs> well, those those That's story, ideal. Those, so those stories are far and few behind. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So Joe, Joe, you wanted to ask something. You have a question? <laughs> you, you guys pretty much covered a lot. <laughs> I don't yeah, know what else to um, ask. Uh, <clears throat> if anything, I would be curious. Do you have any advice for people that get into like franchises and like maybe what you've learned now that you're in Face Foundry? Yeah. Um, so this has been such like such a blast for me. Um, Number one, like I am loving learning a completely new industry and it's a it's an industry like I personally care a lot about. I was always I was always the gal that walked into Sephora and I had two baskets, you know, like I'm the first one when I go on a vacation to book my spa day. Like I, I, I just I love that and I always have. Um, so it's 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 genuinely an area like I care about. I enjoy um, and I, you know, I believe very much in like self care and, and, you know, as a business owner and leader, you know, you haven't asked me the question yet about boundaries or time and balance and all of those things. And, and I'm going to be honest and saying, like, I think the whole work life balance is a complete facade. It doesn't exist, oh. especially as a business leader. Oh. Um, but the thing that tends to be the thing that gets sacrificed first is ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I just truly believe very much like taking care of ourselves. We can't be our best, whether it's best wife or partner or mother or business leader or daughter or what have you if, you're, if we're not taking care of ourselves. Right. And that's um, why once a week we have to go to Face Foundry. Yes. Once a week. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why that's every morning <laughs> I use the, the wipes. <laughs> the face boundary wife. <laughs> the face boundary wife. We love it. I love it. Um, but you know, there there is a connection there for me as to why I'm doing face boundary um, and the whole aspect of of self care and I just I believe so much in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sorry, I forgot your question. <laughs> <laughs> like I just got off on my own tangent here. Yeah, yeah, that it was. was it was mainly just about like what is it like being a franchisee? Oh, franchise, yeah. So I'm learning a advice. completely different. You know, I love this 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 business, but I mm. now I'm, I'm wearing a different hat. Yeah, yeah. and. Um, you know, one of the, the things that is different about being, you know, leading a franchise organization is there is another company up there where, you know, mm. we, we, we absolutely need to be adhering to the brand and where the, the company is going. Um, so it's not like every decision is your own to make. Mm. Um, so you have to really believe in the concept and like care very much about bringing that brand and that consistency. Um, we just opened a new friend, uh, not mine, but a franchisee opened in Sarasota just this week. And it's been so fun to watch her, but I know like we're gonna, <laughs> we're going to play off of each other mm -hmm. right. but just to see her growth and um knowing that that there's just an ability for us to to really care about the brand and that consistency um there's a in a way there's almost like there's a safety in that because i don't have to make all the decisions mm -hmm. and yet on the other hand there's a little bit of a um you know, there's restrictions. I can't do anything and everything that I right. want within the concept. And that's what I was going to ask you. Like, do you feel it's a bigger challenge to have someone above you that you have to do, like, see them as a guide? No, I mean, for me, I, I, I think it's, I, I love that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, because I, having your own because I believe and I'm aligned with where the business where the company is going so for me it's like awesome <clears throat> I love that we're doing this mm -hmm. new you know a brand new proprietary skincare line awesome let me have it right. let's go <laughs> let's be yeah. successful here right. so I love that aspect of mm -hmm. the franchise but it's very different than having my own business yeah. my own companies yeah. and and being fully responsible for literally every single decision including right. product and brand and, and all of that right like everything um, i'm sure mm -hmm. has its pros and its cons yeah, yeah and it's, absolutely and it's been a little hard with you because we can literally take this 
like for three, two hours talking because <laughs> you have so much information, so much yeah. valuable information. I really enjoyed this uh, season interview. two. We're doing season wow. two. <laughs> All right. But yes. we want to thank you so much for your time. We really thank appreciate you. it. Uh, yeah. Just want to make sure that the cameras don't shut off. <laughs> <laughs> the batteries. Yes. No, well, thank, thank you so, so much, much, Terry. Yes, you're welcome. This is super fun. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon again. Yes. <laughs>